Welcome everyone to the Optosys uh, webinar. Today we'll take a look at the patient file secrets. Um, uh, my name is Eric, uh, Eric Lemire. I'll be uh, the one presenting the actual webinar today. I'll be assisted by my colleague, Marc Andre, who will actually take care of the questions and help me assisting with that uh, webinar. How are you, Marc Andre? Pretty good, and uh, hi everybody, and thank you for joining our webinar today, and I hope you uh, learned something today. And I hope too that everyone will learn something today. Uh, thanks a lot for your assistance. There's a lot of people on the uh, webinar today. Thanks a lot for your participation. It's actually uh, allow us to do better webinar and actually uh, inform you of all the actually uh, features of Optisys that you might be missing on and that you'll may be able to use uh, anytime soon if you uh, going back to Optisys. So today we'll take a look at the uh, patient file. And by the way, uh, there's a lot of webinars uh, going on at the moment. Some of you might already have seen that we've done a webinar uh, for the uh, new version of Optisys. So if you're still in the old version, you'll be able to know that there's new features that was just added in the new features that you'd be able to download right now if you wanted to. Uh, Marc Andre also uh, doing a webinar on did a webinar on the agenda for the advanced feature of the agenda. But today we'll actually focus on the patient file, which is very important of this, which is pretty much uh, everything we base ourselves upon in our software. So once again, thank you very much for being there. We hope that you'll enjoy it. So this webinar will be recorded and available on YouTube. So yes, we have our own Optisys Solution YouTube channel where you'll be able to watch again and again a very nice webinar we'll do with you today. Uh, of course, you'll, the whole point here is to be able for you to, for you to re-see that webinar so you don't have to take frantic notes during it. And also you'll be able to share that information we're gonna present you today with all of your staff and your colleagues so you don't have to all be there at the same time if the time doesn't fix you. Uh, so we uh, once again have a lot of other webinars that have been added to our channel recently. Um, and there's more coming up uh, also uh, very, very soon. So we try to actually make the most of that time that we have together today and for the, the rest of that you know, weird period we're living right now. Um, and what about if uh, people have questions about Calendar, what happens? All right, so if you do have a, guess, a question, you could open the question section in your go to webinar menu and ask your questions. I will be able to uh, interrupt Eric and ask your question while he's uh, presenting the subject. Yes, and I'll try to let you interrupt me, Marc Andre. So, yes, so there is be that uh, section for the question you can ask during the webinar. However, please take note that all we all also going to have a period question at the end. So, if you want to keep your a question uh, and you want to ask the question yourself, you'll be able to wait at the end of the webinar and we'll be able to uh, allow you to ask your question so everybody can share your questions together. But as you move into the webinar, uh, Marc will either answer the question right away or interrupt me uh, to actually ask a question so everybody, everyone can benefit from all your questions. Thank you, Marc um, In order for us to know a little bit more about yourself, um, who are we talking to in terms of uh, webinar? Even if I do recognize a lot of those names. And uh, good morning, uh, good uh, good day, everyone. Uh, Marc Andre, we have short polls. We'll be able to ask our attendees today. Can we start with the first one, please? Absolutely. So on the screen, you'll be able to see the first question, and you'll be able to answer the question using the little white dot. So first question is, how long have you been using Optosys? So is it less than a year, more than two years, for more than five years, or for more than 10 years? Very good. Please answer the, the question, everyone. I will actually be waiting for everyone to have answered, and I won't be able to show you the results. So it will be interesting to share together. Perfect. So we'll keep uh, waiting a couple seconds. So 80% of our, uh, our uh, attendees have answered the question so far. Don't be shy. You don't have to be precise. It's just a ballpark figure that we're looking for. Just a little, a little bit, uh, if you're all wizards of Optisys, or you just installed it maybe. Oh, and some some if you may uh, if you do have trouble uh, clicking, uh, just click on the white uh, circle dot, and you should be able to answer the question. Um, That's a good question. I think that everybody responded to the poll. Ooh. 
And if it doesn't work, don't worry. We'll we'll take your answer in the <laughs> in the question uh, window. Um, okay, so I'm pretty sure perfect. everyone. So we'll, we'll publish the results here on the screen. Oh, yeah. and it's not working for a couple of people. And I'm curious, you know, please let us know. know in the question, what are what what are you using a smartphone or a uh, or a computer? And uh, but I'll publish the results right now. So mm -hmm. we've got twenty six percent of youth have been using it for less than one year interesting 39 percent for more than two years okay so that's most of you and uh, 15 percent for more than five years and then still a pretty good 20 percent for more than 10 years aha uh -huh, very good so uh here um as you might know, it's not because you've been using Optisys for 10 years or more that you're normally using all the features of Optisys because you might just rely on the one that you've been showed maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, so we'll, today we'll be able to actually make sure that you're updated to all the nice features that we have uh, added in Optisys since then or since five years or two years. So hopefully you're all going to have all the details. And of course, if you had your training recently, well, you'll be able to complete that training with all the detailed details I'm going to show you today. Again, um, and thank you for uh, answering. And we yes. have another question here we could put on screen. I could see in the comments that uh, some of you, uh, the questions didn't work, uh, but uh, Simon here says that it worked when he, uh, when he, it, it didn't work when he was in full screen, but then he minimized the window just a little bit and it worked. So maybe some of you uh, could try that. So let's go with the second uh, question here on the screen, which is, which version of Optisys are you currently using? So are we using version 42? So the latest version of Optisys, 41, 40, 39, or maybe you don't even know. Yeah, and it's understandable oh, if you don't know because yeah, all you guys are pretty much at home and you might not be in front of Optisys and you might not the one doing the updates yourselves. So yeah, just uh, answer what you can. But if you do know, I will be interested to know if uh, you can use those uh, latest features that we added uh, not long ago in the v version, the version V42. Absolutely. So we'll give you a couple more seconds. Don't worry if it doesn't work. It's just to give us a good idea. And um, no, and it works in a small window. Okay, so that's good news. So if, if you are in a full screen and it doesn't work, you could use the little uh, square to uh, make your window a little smaller and you'll be able to uh, answer the questions. I believe that is most of you. So we'll go ahead with the answers. Chris. And we'll see that 53% of you are in version 42. So nice. that is great news. Exactly. Um, then we've got version 41, which is still a pretty uh, version that was out this year. So 17%. And then I don't know, 30%. Um, maybe Eric could show us where we could see which version we are in a little later uh, while we connect. Exactly. And well, thank you for all the one that updated to version 42. Uh, of course, you'll be able to benefit from all those features, but also it uh, makes sure that all our effort of actually doing those webinars and sending you emails and communication to actually have you update every time we have a new one actually works. So uh, bravo everyone for that. So thank you. Um, today we'll take a look at the patient file. Like I said previously, uh, we'll be able to go into some little advanced features that might not all every one of you either understand or users because they, they never knew it existed. So uh, the first one is the free text search. So this is something that we added about three, four version ago. Um, it will allow you to search your patient with free text or let's say Google banners. Um, first of all, it can be defined in the default values as your default search option. So some of you might have the last name as where your, your, your focus is on when you open up the search page of Optisys. Uh, some of other one might be in the uh, phone number, maybe date of birth. However, I strongly recommend to take a look into the option of getting the free text to be your default because here we can actually do pretty much whatever you want in terms of search options. So here, I'm actually putting letters from anywhere into the patient name, into the uh, email address, uh, could also be in uh, the spouse name if I wanted to. So all those combination of a SHA or GIL needs to be somewhere into the patient file. We're actually gonna look in those actual uh, combinations of search uh, criterias everywhere 
And I've put 20 because I know my patient is born in 2000 something. I don't know if it's 2007 and 2008. So I'll just put that 20. And if I knew that my patient was a Gmail patient, I could put just Gmail without having all the rest of the email before that. And Optosys will be able to find a patient that have those information somewhere in their files. So a little bit like a Google search, we'll be able to find pretty much all the patient we're looking for. So as you see, I just click on enter and it goes directly to a patient that have those letters that I mentioned earlier, uh, along with that uh, date of birth that I have here. Um, also, uh, you can also benefit from that technology in the search of the product. So, you know, of course, you search your patients with a lot of different names, but you sometimes need to find your frames and your lenses and your missiles product when you're selling them, when you just search for uh, information on them, or uh, to have the details about how many times we sold it. So here, we'll be able, once again, to use a free text search. So uh, if you, let's say, have some information about, let's say, a frame that you're looking at, we we drop that, that little uh, maybe uh, label that we normally have attached to the frame, so we, we cannot uh, use the item number. So Altasys will give you other options to search it. Of course, a lot of you also already use a category, a supplier brand, but then we have to use all of them. It takes time to actually um, enter all that information. But if you want, you can actually just put in the frame number, which is normally inside the temple of the frame, or a combination of all the other search criteria. So, of course, we can understand that for a frame, we could put uh, MAR if we know it's for Marshawn, or HU if you know that it's Hugo Boss, uh, because not a lot of other brands and suppliers have the frame letters in them. And of course, for those optimic lenses, we could actually just put ESS for Essilor, we could put uh, VAR for Varilux, and CRIZ for, or just ZAL for Crizal, and just mix those letters together to find the uh, lenses that we're looking for. So in that case, I know only the number and the, the supplier, so we're going to search with those very broad text search, but Autosys will give me all the options that I have. So I have a Emilio Pucci, which is 2126, and I have a Chloe, which is C2126. Well, I'll be able to find it anyway, because Autosys finds anywhere. It doesn't have to be the first letters or the first numbers. So then I'll be able to find exactly what I'm looking for. So that little free text search in the patient and in the uh, search for the product is very uh, practical. And once again, uh, going into the default values of Optosys. So if you've been using Optosys maybe for five or 10 years, you might not remember to go there because it's been a long time since we initialized Optosys. But there it is under admin, application, and default values. There's a lot of information that we added through the years or of default values uh, to actually make your uh, world, Optosys world, a bit easier <laughs> to work with. And it's under the first, first tab called general that you'll be able to set your product search for the products, by example. So if I'm looking here, I can define that the frames is the default type of product I'm looking for. And uh, here I'll be able to search by product number and so forth, uh, product number and so forth or not. And also uh, under uh, patient one, if I can save it, I'll be able to define my search patient and what type of search I wanna do by default. So is it name? or is it that marvelous free text I just talked about? So that's something we can set up in the default values. Eric, could we uh, could we search for an address in that search line, in the free text search? Uh, unofficially, no. The, um, the free text only allows you to search within the uh, existing search criteria that we used before. So first name, last name, spouse, uh, Medicare, which is what a provincial system you're using, OHIP, MSP, Elder Healthcare, and so forth. Email address, the file number, the phone number, the date of birth, but not the address because we never could search by the address here. Thank that you, Eric. Thank you for the question, Marc Henri. Any other good question regarding the free text search in the patient or the uh, product search, maybe? So far, so good. Um, we might have a question uh, for, for the end, I believe. Um, but again, if you do have questions or if you just joined this webinar and uh, are wondering what the questions are, there is a little question window that you could pop up and ask your question and, and I will interrupt Eric while we are 
we are um, training you on these uh, beautiful features. Thank you very much, Marc Henri. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and uh, a lot of you seen it, I'm sure, in the patient file once again, but maybe never either use it or don't know how to use it. It's the marketing consent management. It's we understand that there is a law in Canada. It's called the C28 law. It's an anti-spam. Um, legislation that have been passing maybe three, four years ago that actually um, uh, make sure that every Canadian company like yourselves cannot send marketing emails to, patient, to patients or clients, I should say, without their consent. So just to make sure that there is no spamming involved when we send marketing emails. So of course, in that window, you've seen those uh, options on the bottom right, where you'll be able to actually specify if the patient wants a marketing email or doesn't want it, or we never ask. So we have those three options, would like to receive, does not want to receive, and no email preference. By the way, there's the same thing for SMS. Uh, there's no application yet in Optisys for the SMS marketing. And between you and me, maybe the patients are not ready yet to receive uh, marketing through SMSs. But anyway, you'll be able to do it uh, by email at least. And this is very powerful. So uh, by example, I did one at the beginning of the year for a clinic that wanted to promote their Define uh, contact lenses from IQ, you know, the one that actually um, enhanced the color of the eyes. And we were able to send those emails, first of all, to patients that only consent to receive the emails. And I, I'll go into that later on. But also we were able to really target an audience of female only that were between 35 and 55, very low uh, powers in their eyes, and ordered color contact lenses before. We, we were even able to specify certain area codes um, in Montreal here with a maybe higher scale revenues than others. So we'll really be able to, to, to target our audience very um, precisely using Optisys and using the selection filters. But the whole point here is that those marketing emails are illegal if you don't abide by the law. And when we say abiding by the law, it also means uh, whoops, that we'll need to make sure that we uh, have their consent. Of course, if you do select a patient consent on your Optisys file, well, that's perfect. So the patient will always have that consent expressly, expressly expressed um, verbally or by writing. So that's that's going to be good forever until the patients uh, change their minds. However, there is always a apply imply consent that also actually um, include in the law, which is that after you've done a visit or an invoice for the patient, if you get their email address, you'll be able within 24 months to do those marketings. Of course, as soon as a patient uh, resp replied to your email and said, I don't want to receive them anymore, well, of course, you'll have to stop. But until they do that, you have 24 months. But after that 24 months, you don't have that access anymore. And only adult patients can give a consent, a uh, minor can give them. So here in Optisys, if the patient uh, have, let's say, no email preference, uh, and by the way, Optisys keep track of every change into the patient file um, with the date and the, the tag and everything, uh, the marketing will be legal up to 24 months after the visit or the invoice. However, because we have no email uh, preference, it will, it will not be legal after that two year period. However, if we get, and I, I strongly suggest to try to do it, the actual consent verbally or uh, uh, written consent from the patient, then we'll be able to send them for forever until the patient actually refuse them again. Of course, if the patient tells you right away that it doesn't want to receive anything, well, then you cannot send anything. Where I want to go with that is that Optisys is very smart allowing you to manage it because when you're going to do what we call a selection, and now again, you don't have to do your selection yourself. You can always have the help from our support team to do those marketing selections. But in Optisys, we have a filter. And let me find it uh, in here. So um, parents, uh, patient eligible for e-marketing uh, email. So that actual filter in the selection will always make sure that you're going to abide by the law. So this will calculate if that patient is 
18 years, 18 years old or older, if the patient have a consent in their files, and if they have no preferences, uh, if uh, the patient have any visit or invoice in the last 24 months. So opticists will think about everything that I showed you or uh, trained you on automatically, but that field will be very important to check when you're gonna send out those marketing to your patients. Um, the, the importance of the thing uh, is, is there because one of the example I can give you is a uh, mar uh, accounting company that actually did uh, some uh, marketing emails using the emails or of their client uh, they, they were uh, uh, getting from the uh, tax revenues and everything and tax reports and they use it to do some marketing and uh, the patient never gave them the consent per se a lot of them was more than two years done and they got fined something like a quarter of a million so it's, it's a, if there is any uh, patient to actually do a, uh, a complaint, uh, it could be troublesome. So just make sure that you abide by the law. You're always going to be good. And Opticis will help you do that. Eric, we do have a couple of questions in Please. regards to the consent. Um, so the first one here, the email consent does not cover general clinic mailings about closures or appointment reminders. Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, absolutely. So it, it doesn't cover anything that refer to the medical, uh, um, let's say, file of the patient. So in appointment reminders, appointment confirmation, recalls, doctor follow-up with the drops that we prescribed last month, or even uh, if your, your glasses, your first progressive, is it still uh, comfortable enough two weeks later? Those are not marketing emails. Those are medical emails that you have a relationship with your patient. So the, the law doesn't apply. It only applies on marketing emails. And but the, the marketing terms in the law is pretty broad. However, so if you send an email uh, regarding new opening hours, that's marketing. If you send an email about new staff or new doctors, that's also marketing. However, uh, a date of an appointment confirmation and such uh, is only a medical type of email. Any Sounds good. Questions? I do have another question. Yes. Uh, does marketing consent, consent, uh, uh, consent, sorry, affect whether we can recall patients by SMS or email? That's a very good question. So no, all the recalls are not affected by that law. So all the appointment confirmation, once again, reminders, uh, and just, uh, information about the appointments or even if you actually send 12 emails to make sure the patient will be there tomorrow those are not uh, categorized as marketing because there are medical appointment confirmation and emails they're not marketing per se very good any Sounds other good. thank you i've questions? got one more question in Please. this regard um sms and this is for sms and email if a patient wishes to receive notifications for recalls, exams, et cetera, by SMS or email, but does not want newsletters, promos, et cetera, how should this be indicated on the patient info page? So that's a very good question. So see here, remember, so under marketing consent management on the lower right, we have the options does not want to receive newsletters, promotion by email. So if that is check, just leave it check. However, in the preferred communication method, specify if the patient prefers to be emailed or SMS, because that's where you'll be able to set it up in terms of preference of the patient. And if you have the Optosys recall, uh, if the one who doesn't know, that's the module that sends automatically the appointment confirmation and the recalls and reminders to the patient uh, based upon a specific schedule, uh, Optosys will uh, abide by the uh, preference that you set up. And once you can actually send out those marketing, that patient particularly will never be part of it. Sounds good. I've got another question here. Is there a limit on how long after initial exam we could send a recall email? No, that's a very good point. You can actually keep on recalling your patient because you're doing that. Uh, it's a medical email. You're doing that just to make sure that their eye um, health is always going to be correct. So you can actually send recalls 10 years after. A lot of actually doctors sometimes when they're in low on appointments are actually uh, um, 
trying to get those recalls that are very, very old of patients that never came back since four years or five years. And of course, that's still very, very legal and very quick to do with an email. It's pretty, pretty, pretty much a one or two click thing. Eric, I have a question here, and, and this might be a, a good to watch our next webinar next week, right, on, on mail merges. But, but for now, uh, this question here is, if we're sending an email about COVID-19, so we wanted to, you to know that we're still open for emergencies, is this marketing? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, if um, you just specify to your patient that you're for for, re for health reasons, of course, for the COVID-19, you'll be closing, this is not a marketing email. However, if you specify that for the COVID-19 thing, uh, please go online and check our online catalog, well, that's marketing. So yeah, so you'll have to be very um, detailed about what type of um, communication you want to send out, because yes, all this will allow you to do so much things, but you'll have to be aware of that whole marketing stuff. So in the case of where we're going to be closed and we're going to, uh, let's say, call you when we'll have something, whatever you want. If it's, there's no marketing or sales intended, well, that's going to be okay. But as soon as there's intended sales or um, advising, then you should always have that little uh, patient eligibility, eligibility filter in your selections. Eric, how about closed for Christmas? Is this marketing? Uh, well, actually, yes. Uh, as weird as it is, if you're actually changing your hours uh, uh, even if it's uh, closing or adding or removing hours or limiting your hours, if it's uh, just for your store, your actual optical side, and not only mm -hmm. for your um, medical practice, it's actually marketing. I've got I've got two more questions for you. Um, the first one here is: uh, Do we have to make the patient sign uh, to have them authorize us to send a recall by email or SMS? Because right well, now that's what we are doing. Well, that's actually very very good. The 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 law doesn't uh, precise that the, um, the, the the consent can be either verbal or written. So actually in the law. However, uh, a, a verbal consent uh, it's pretty much your words again the other. So if a patient actually for a reason that I don't know would actually say you never ask me even if you you did ask them, uh, it's always tough to to manage in terms of like legally. So I always. It's going to be always suggested uh, um, to actually do it uh, written. So you always have a written proof with a signature of your patient. However, uh, the law specify that the uh, uh, verbal consent is sufficient. But then again, I guess that this is only if both parties accept that there's been a consent together. I've got one last question before we, we need to proceed, right? Um, how, and this is a really good uh, question from Dr. Park. How do I turn off automatic email recalls at the moment because patients cannot book anything now? And when I resume the automatic recalls, will those patients that were temporarily suspended get recalled automatically? So I know Ooh. I know a lot of clients may have this question right now. Exactly. And that's a good one. And of course, we had a lot of calls and the support regarding that. So this is... Uh, by the way, for everyone to understand, it's for that automatic recall module in Optisys that we call Optisys Recall that's actually going to send the appointment confirmation and recall uh, reminders to the patient automatically. So in those time right now, I understand that a lot of clicks not that actually you can't, and most uh, provinces uh, take eye exam appointments, only emergencies. So a lot of clinics actually wanted to remove because the you don't want to send recalls to the patient knowing that there will be no appointment. However, uh, a lot of clinics actually kept it also because uh, the patient, when they're going to receive the recall, they'll be invited to go on online booking to book. And of course, you control in Optisys the uh, schedule of when you want people to book or not. So all the clinics just open up on the 1st of June and we'll just manage your appointment from there. And they don't have anything available until then. So if a patient receives an, um, an appointment or a recall by email, they'll be invited to book an appointment, but they only can book on, uh, from June 1st. So that's one option. Of course, we can always deactivate the whole module and it won't set everything. However, it's an on-off switch. So if we deactivate the automatic recall, all the recalls 
that would have been normally processed using the recall module will be lost. You'll have to actually do it the good old fashioned ways using the selection, using the right dates and the right filter to actually grab those patients and call them or email them manually from Optisys. Because when you're going to turn on the switch, the recalls will only sent from that day. So if a patient have a recall on the 1st of June, and that's when you reactivate it, only those patients will start having recalls. Again, all the patients from, let's say, May uh, and June, uh, the rest of May, actually, uh, will never receive it. So it's um, it, 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 there is a good side on both sides. So a lot of clinics, but it's pretty much half and half. Some of them actually just deactivate and will track them manually, uh, but some clinics kept it so they don't have to do the recalls themselves afterwards and just let the patient book themselves uh, later in the year. Very good. Thank you, Eric. That, that's pretty much it for now. And uh, thank you for those who joined after uh, or, or just recently. Uh, please note this webinar will be on YouTube. And while you are on our YouTube page, please uh, um, take the opportunity to subscribe to our page because we'll be posting many webinars in the, the next coming weeks. Um, so thank you, Eric, for answering to those questions. Thank you, Marc-André. And uh, just so you know, also to complete it, when you uh, subscribe to our um, Optisys channel on YouTube, you'll receive in the, um, information every time there will be a new one available for you to see. So you don't have to check every every two days of what's that happening. You'll actually get uh, alerts when you'll get something new. Very good. So now. Let's talk about TELUS, which is another part of the patient file that people uh, have a lot of questions for at the support here at Optisys. So uh, with TELUS, yes, you must, well, you must, you always gonna we'll advise you to do the claims from the invoice. Uh, there's several insurance companies we have to look at. Uh, there's always more added for pretty much every version. And we'll see at the end that there's little, little details in here that we uh, will be able to uh, share with you. But before I go there, I want to make sure that everybody understand what TELUS is. So a lot of people uh, of you use it, uh, but some of them, of you either don't use it or don't like to use it for any reason, and I'll be able to give you the best practice for this. So first of all, yes, you have to register with TELUS before you can use it. Um, and by the way, when you're going to do a TELUS claim, I strongly suggest for everyone in the office who do TELUS claims or create them, to have their own username and password with TELUS. That's something we can create on the TELUS website. Uh, just with the same doctor's file, we can create multiple users. The great thing there is that people will be able to register themselves and appear as themselves who did it or not did it. So uh, of course, also in the patient file, we need to keep track of the actual information about the patient. Uh, uh, insurance card. So here, of course, we'll put the ubiquitous insurer policy number and member ID. Also, please know that we can select either from the database or not from the database the actual insured person. So if you're dealing with child uh, that is covered under their parents' insurance, well, then you can either search using that little icon for the patient, the parent's file, and Hopefully you have all entered the information into that file pertaining to the insurance, so then it will copy the information directly here. However, if uh, the patient, the parent's file are not in Optisys, well then you'll be able to actually type in the name manually of uh, that, that parent if needed. And of course, the relationship can be set up just like you would do on the website. So here, uh, that first name and last name, uh, uh, it can be whatever you want it. Also, for the one who doesn't know, the secondary uh, information here doesn't work at the moment. So this will be for copay, but copay is pretty complicated to set up and there's a lot of rules. So uh, TELUS just decided to not let us, uh, let us use it uh, because the companies don't talk to each other yet. So here, uh, just you can use it for anything. So if your patients do have two insurance, you can put the information in the secondary, but just so you know, it won't be able to be used with TELUS. So if you really want to go ahead and use both companies uh, in the same invoice, uh, you'll be able to actually switch them. Uh, so put this secondary in a primary and vice versa, but you have to do it manually. Also, you can also use it for all those um, insurance companies that are not TELUS. So if you want to record a patient having a manual life and another one 
and another insurance for the same patient for Blue Cross or Green Shield or even the uh, other type of um, provincial social services type of uh, number and uh, insurance type for third parties, you can record it in the secondary because it's an empty field for you to use. You can record other information that doesn't pertain to TALUS. Eric, I've got a good question while we're in that subject. Uh, we always, we've always created a dummy file for policyholders who are not patients. Insurance companies usually need data bird, et cetera, to process. Are we creating more work for ourselves? A uh, little bit. <laughs> so uh, here under the, uh, the insured member per se, you can always put uh, whatever names that you want. So uh, you can actually put the name of the actual policy holder. So that's going to be the name of the patient, let's say. So that can be the domestic partner. <laughs> let's, say, let's set it up right now of that Cherry and Gillette file. Of course, this is only for when you do the claims. We don't have to do that dummy file in Optisys. So it's a lot faster just putting whatever name in here than having to create a file. And if you want to set up a date of birth, just put a uh, date of birth, whatever it is, so 1940 in here. So, uh, of course, uh, by the way, this is only for this for the version 42 uh, users of you that will have access to that big note field here. So, you can actually have more information pertaining to that non optisis uh, file that we have here under that policyholder Gillette patient, which is not really a patient hypnosis. So yes, we can modify that insured member section with either, well, ideally an actual file, but if you don't have that file existing, if you don't have that person as a patient, well, you can create the actual name manually, but it needs to be another relationship than, than self, because of course self is for that specific patient. But as long as we modify it, we can put whatever we want. We've got one last one for you until we could proceed. Is it okay to put a non-TELUS insurer in the primary field if they don't have a TELUS insurer? Absolutely. So, of course, the, the first uh, point of having that first primary information is for TELUS purposes. But if the patient only have a Blue Cross uh, insurance, well, just put it there. However, uh, maybe best practice will be to put it directly in the secondary in case someday the patient will have a, a TELUS insurance somewhere where we'll be able to put in the primary and you don't have to actually switch the information for the primary and the secondary and so forth. So um, yes, it's possible, but I always gonna recommend to put it in the secondary for that purpose. Thank you, Eric. No problem. Um, of course, now that we know how to set it up in Optisys, we'll be able to go on the invoice uh, for the one, once again, we've never used it. Uh, we'll be able to use that little magic insurance claim button uh, from Optisys. So you know, you can take note right now, and of course you can re-listen to that uh, webinar later on for manual life, manual life only, all the lenses and all the products cannot be a quantity more than one. So if you have two lenses, you have to create two lines of one lenses each for manual life because manual life just doesn't understand multiple uh, quantities per line. So that's something you might want to remember if you do in manual life. And yes, you might recognize those code if you guys are actually using it or not. You can use include if you want to include the actual fee in your, uh, in your claim or not, once again. Um, and then you can actually create the claim from here. So when I was saying that it's much, it's ideal to have everyone in the office who can create claim to have their own username and password, so that once they're set up in Optisys, their own name or they're connected under their uh, user in Optisys will appear on the top. So you don't have to modify it every time. And of course, the provider will be uh, today's uh, visit provider that will appear on there for the actual doctor. Predetermination is only works with what they call now Canada Life, which was previously what was Life. That's the only one who works pre predetermination. However, if you want to go around it for other insurance companies using TELUS, you can do a payment request. Then you'll see how much a patient is covered for. And if they don't want to go through it, you can void it. The void 
only available between midnight tonight. So what I mean is that if you do the claim this morning at 8, you have the whole day to avoid it. But if you do the claim at 9 p.m. for whatever reason, you only have three hours to avoid it. After midnight, the payment will proceed and you cannot avoid the claim anymore. So the, day, the next day, it's too late. If you really want to avoid it, you have to call uh, the insurance company directly, which is a lot more tedious than doing it from Optisys. Any questions, Mark Henry? Mark Henry? Oh, can you hear me, Eric? Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions? Oh, uh, no, not right now. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Uh, so yeah. So from here, we'll be able to click on submit. The um, uh, generate predetermination. Pre so if you had a predetermination and you want to generate a new one because you had an error message, is there? generate payment and generate void. So if you want to void something, you can click on one of those three icons that are grayed out at the moment because my claim is not uh, been passed through yet. Eric, we, we've got a question on this page. We have the experience that sometimes voids don't work. Well, some, uh, well, you're right, actually, the void for some type of policy doesn't work. So, uh, of course, in that case, you'll have to call the insurance company. Those are pretty rare, but you're right, it happens for uh, the big users. And that actually only depends on the uh, rules applied by a certain policy for a certain insurance. So um, that's something that we cannot go around it. But, of course, uh, we have to abide by what TELUS actually allows us or not allow us to do, depending on the patient's uh, member ID and policy number are. Eric, we, we have a lot of claims that go to pending and no action seems to happen. We can wait for weeks and they never stop pending. Why does this happen? Well, thank you for asking the question because that's exactly where I wanted to go afterwards. So right now, if the claim is paid, which is, let's say, the case at the moment, uh, uh, just remember or just know that the claim will actually stay into that private insurance claim section as paid or new, uh, as you see here, projected for most of them, which is just a demo database. However, uh, and of course you'd be paid afterwards within four business days, I think. Uh, however, if there are pending, well, there's nothing that will ever happen with those claims. So you might get paid, you might not get paid, but Optisys will never have a different um, status than the actual paid status as uh, pending status on it so that's uh, actually can be bothersome so what we always recommended for talus claim that are pending is just to void the claim right away and ask the full payment from your patient uh, sometimes the, the the pending is actually they the company needs more investigation to make sure they can pay the, the claim or not so uh, in that case just let the patient go and ask the patient to uh, uh, deal themselves with the actual claim and claim it themselves. Uh, the, the insurance company might have some questions for them, but don't wait for that uh, because we don't know and you'll never know if you're going to get paid or not. Uh, and the, the difficult thing is that if you don't void it before you have the full patient, the, the full payment is that you might receive the payment and the patient paid. And now you have to reimburse the patient, which is not a very nice uh, thing to, to be doing. So uh, yeah, just can't void everything when it's pending then. Other questions, Mark Eldon? No, very good. Thank you for asking, Eric. Uh, not right now, but I will let you know. Thank you. And just so you always know that if the claim is accepted automatically, if you click on that insurance claim button, Offices will link the payment accepted by the insurance company and put it as a third party in your invoice. Of course, every time you want to specify that you've been paid by the insurance company, you'll have to create the payment using the single payment here for that whatever payer it is manually, because so far we don't have access to your bank account yet. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so there's little things I wanted to talk to you about. So uh, we also have a consent merger document. So in Optisys, since version 41, if you go under printing, mail merge, and execute, we have an option called TELUS Consent Form OSI. So this is a consent form exactly the same way that is um, recommended by TELUS themselves to have that consent from the patient 
consenting that you can use their information to uh, claim on their behalf. So a lot of you may not know that, but uh, uh, TELUS recommend to use such a form. So if you do something on behalf of the patient, they know. Of course, in real world environments, you're always going to tell them in advance we're going to do such a claim because they, they're giving on their insurance claim card. But to be completely legit, you have to make them sign that little form. And that form will be pre-populated uh, with uh, the information about the patient. So if I view this uh, little form, I'm going to show it to you if it's not too long. If it's not too long. Uh, because you, you all have it if you are a vision, I think you're all version 42 or for, uh, 41 or 42. So as you see, it looks very good. And the great thing is that all the information about the patient will actually copy itself automatically. However, the patient still have to sign at the bottom uh, and accept the terms and conditions, and they have to do it on paper. So you, you do have to print it, but the printout goes very fast. And the only thing I need to add on this is that you'll have to define your address, your city, and your province and your postal code in the mail merge in advance. But as long as it saves there, it will always be the same one when you're going to actually uh, print it out afterwards. And all the patient information will be dynamic from which patient you're actually creating that uh, form for. So that's a little hint I'm going to give you to if you want to use it. I don't want to use those predefined forms and enter everything every time. Also, uh, generate cancellation. You can do before midnight the same day. Oh, Sun Life uh, government policies. The one actually have policy number uh, starting with 5555. Five. Uh, even if there's another five afterward or a six or a seven, uh, those will never be accepted uh, through a third party like Opticis. It's It's just the government deciding not to go this way. Uh, Desjardins, if you have any patients uh, insured by Desjardins Insurance, only pays directly to the patient. So you can proceed the claim, but you'll never receive the money. The patient will, but uh, of course, you're going to have to make the patient pay the entire amount. And the predetermination tool, like I said, is only available with now what they call Canada Life, formerly Great, Great West Life. Eric, for that consent form from TELUS, do you print it? Or can you send it to a tablet for an electronic signature? Uh, well, uh, can you send it? Yes, you can actually send it. We'll talk about, we'll talk about the uh, email shortcut later on. Uh, however, uh, the um, TELUS uh, told us they le leg uh, legally or in their recommendation, it's better to have a, uh, sign, a physically signed signature in actual paper form. Of course, you can always scan that paper afterwards and attach it to offices for the one or you that are paperless, which is ideal. Uh, but yeah, I guess that you can also email it to a type of tablet and you can write over, but then I don't know how it's going to look like when it's signed or what type of application you're going to use to sign it on. Uh, but it's possible to send it by email. That's the only thing you can tell. Okay. Some some of the users want to know, uh, could we go over the list that do uh, of companies that do predeterminations. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, actually, there's only one. Uh, that's easy enough. <laughs> so we'll go through a list of companies, but for predetermination, it's only Canada, uh, sorry, Canada Life, as I see at the bottom here at the, of my little PowerPoint page. Okay, and I, and I believe that this is also very important. Uh, a clinic is using this, and, and they're, uh, are, do they have to visually validate that it pays to policyholder or healthcare provider organization? Yes, and I think does. we should show them where the default Absolutely. values are for that. Uh, well, actually, the the, um, the default, when you ask, uh, when you do your claim, so let me go into whatever claim here, uh, you can ask whatever you want for the payable to. So normally it's going to be to your professional or your organization by default. Uh, and I guess uh, you're right, Macandai can show that. However, if the, the insurance wants to pay directly to the patient, that information, first of all, would be changed and will appear in red. And by the way, that's the same. If your policy number is wrong, your member ID is a bit wrong, your last name is not, your first name is not the same as they have on their files uh, for that, that patient, every information that is a bit crook or wrong will appear in red. So of course, if there's too much wrong information, it will just not find the patient, but at least you'll have some correction um, depending on the insurance company. But yeah, the payable too can change. Even if you request to be paid yourself, uh, like the, the best example is Desjardins. If you try to send a claim uh, to be paid to you, 
they will actually revert back to be paid to the policyholder because Gejere always pays to the policyholder. So even if you don't set that yourself, you, you set it to the wrong thing, uh, Autisys will correct it. And if you want to know which one to have by default, it's under admin, LS settings, and then default values. And that's where by default, the claim default payable to will be. And if you want to set something different for different uh, insurance companies, go back in the same admin tell settings, but this time go under insurer. So the default value is for all insurers, but if you want to have a specific one for one insurer, go under the insurer. And then if I select one that is here, uh, we'll have a payable two that I can set up to be either the healthcare provider, so the, the doctor directly, the organization, which is the office name, or once again, the policy holder. I hope that I didn't actually lost everyone <laughs> at once. <laughs> but yeah, so of course, if you need more details about it, you'll be able to reach our support line. You'll be more than happy to actually give you more options about it. Any questions on TELUS, McConaughey? Not so far. Thank you, Eric. Okay, very good. Let's talk about the orders now, because that's still part of something uh, very important into the patient file. And we, once again, we have a lot of questions regarding it. So I just want to make sure that we go over some of the details here in the orders of Optosis. First and foremost, we now have two types of Rx. We have the optometrist Rx, which is uh, that little Rx that have no options of putting any dispensing information, lenses and frames and so forth. Uh, those are called optometrist Rx because it's mostly that. It's like a final pristine Rx. And those will have the little Rx sign on the first first column. However, if you want to dispense a patient, you can actually add spectacle uh, using that Rx that came from the doctor. Um, and there, of course, we'll be able to dispense a patient with the lenses and the frame. Let's talk about the lenses now. Whatever you use SLR, Nikon, Hoya, or very shortly Zeiss, you can, or if you don't know, you can download those lenses and you'll be able to send those to the lab directly, which is a very nice feature. But for that, you need to know that Optisys will uh, make sure before it's in the lab order that the RX, the prescription, the powers, will need to match what's available for those lenses. So what's actually the supplier uh, gave as a range of ability in terms of sear cylinder axis or combined power. And same thing for measurements. So depending on the lenses you're gonna select, some of those special parameters will actually be showing because every lenses have special uh, measurements that are needed. And some of them are mandatory. So as everywhere else in offices, the mandatory fields will be in yellow, where the non-mandatory one will not be in yellow. Uh, however, I would recommend to actually fill out those measurements even if they're not mandatory. But if you just leave it empty, the lab will just default whatever information they can. But for the yellow ones, they won't. So you won't be able to send the lab order to the lab at all if they're not uh, have values in it. So that's for the special parameters. Uh, also, the note, so the famous lab order note here, will be limited to 20 characters. Not that you're limited to 20 characters when you enter the analysis, because you can put whatever you want, but what will be sent to the lab will be a maximum of 20 characters. And in the lab order, we're going to show you uh, what's actually of your, your, your um, uh, note, what will be sent to the lab. So if you cannot write uh, an entire story to your lab when you use the B2B in that case. So only 20 first characters. And what's important is that if you do put, even if it's all one only character in that note, it will slow down the B2B ordering process. Why? Because those orders will not go into the queue of all the orders that need to be processed, but will go into an email somewhere for someone that will ultimately be on lunch and won't come back and will get sick from their lunch and all be treated tomorrow. So it will always be faster if you don't put any notes. So the worst thing you can do with your B2B analysis is to put rush in that lab order note because it will never be rushed. Um, 
However, if you want to put very, something very special about uh, this is my own lab order, please do it for free. Of course, let yourself go. You can put those notes in, but just so you know, it won't be as fast as a order without the notes. Any questions, Mark Andre, so far regarding this lab order? Thank you for asking, Eric. Uh, I do have a question, though. You might be getting to this uh, very soon. Uh, how do you track patient files that have been dispensed in order for us to make a follow-up text or call regarding their glasses? Ooh, good point. So yes, we have a follow-up section in the Rx or the lab order. We have both, and they're both synchronized together when we generate the lab order from the Rx. And then you'll be able to specify when they're ready, advise, and deliver. And of course, from there, we can create selections that will include only patients that are advised, but not delivered. Uh, patients are delivered, but not follow up, so we know who to follow up upon. And of course, you'll be able to insert dates in it. So, uh, of course, I, my goal right now is not to do a webinar on the selections, but uh, please call us if you're not sure how to do those selections uh, that pertains to those follow up statuses uh, in offices. Any other questions, Mark? Thank you, Eric. So far, so good. Very good. Uh, a little surprise for you. So not only we have the uh, the notes, so like I said, lab order notes, uh, limit the number of notes, create characters, set the measurements into, into account. Um, oh, yeah, and certain promotions also oops, needs to be uh, selected in the treatment. So you never really see it because the treatment had themselves automatically with the catalogs, but it's under here that if you want the Hoya I am growing or the old SLR second pair discount, if you want to identify that without putting a note, you normally can download it in your catalog for treatment. So when you download your ethnic land treatments, it will actually download also all the different promotions and um, program that they have and then you'll be able to select them into the list of treatments manually, of course, using the treatment button to identify to the lab that this is a specific type of order, uh, specifically for a program where I might actually pay a bit less for my lenses. Um, so well, you know your programs more than I do. So that's from here, you'll be able to do it without having to put the notes in there. So once again, not having to slow down the process. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, what I want to show, uh, very excited actually to show you, is the catalog uh, of frames. So yes, it's coming. Stay tuned. It's going to be very, very soon that we'll have a frame catalog offered for you. So we have a lot of different suppliers that will be part of that first um, uh, uh, list of suppliers available right now in 2020. So we have the list here with Aspects, GFRA, Marshawn, Vision Avenue, of course, Westcan, Centennial, Luxetica, Perfect, Western, uh, Westcan, Western, Securo, uh, Local Cali, which is our own home brand, Match Eyewear. So all of these right now actually work with Optisys and will work from when we're going to actually, you're going to receive an email as soon as this will be available for you. And it will allow you to download the catalogs of those suppliers that you use every day and always have accurate information about the actual uh, list or of options in terms of different products or even color and sizes. So let's say that I downloaded Marshawn, which is the case right now, and I'm looking for my own Chloe 2126 uh, gold new that I have in stock, as we see here. Well, Altasys will show you all the other uh, sizes and colors available. And not only you'll be able to see the actual uh, colors available with their numbers and maybe the sizes, but you're also going to be able to view the image of those frames directly from Altasys, clicking on that little view image button that I prefer. So here, if I want to know, if the patient wants to know, oh, well, is the brown compared to the black? Well, just Click on view image, and then you'll be able to go from one to the other and see the difference of the color, which is, uh, well, I see it here, but anyway, uh, you can see the value of it here right now, but be able to show it to your patients. Of course, there'll be a fee for that catalog of product. I think it's going to be around 29, which is a uh, entry fee, a promotion fee, uh, $29 per month, which is pretty much nothing if we uh, appreciate the amount of work that we won't have to do defining all those type of suppliers uh, frames in Optisys because yes, 
is also going to work in your receptions area of Optisys, where instead of having to define your frame, you'll be able just to select your frame from a list. But uh, that's, I'll, I'll let you imagine and dream about it tonight. Uh, my point today is not to do a training on it, but uh, it's going to be coming and going to change your world entirely. Any questions, once again, Marc-André, on what I just said? Thank you, Eric, and no questions so far. We did have a question uh, about, uh, are we going to work with uh, Centennial? Um, but I believe you answered that, correct? Uh, I believe so. So uh, Centennial is in my list, absolutely. So uh, of course, we don't have all the um, OSI uh, suppliers right now in our list, but we're actually working uh, right now on adding as much as possible through with time, uh, because of course they need to uh, create the technology that allows them to upload their catalog and always maintain a uh, correct and updated catalog with us. So uh, as they come along, we'll have a lot more in our list. Thank you, Mark Company. And, and also, and also to to uh, to complete, uh, how about the Centennial lenses? Oh, that's a very good question. So the lenses, I know there is still neg negotiation. Um, once again, if you have any uh, suppliers that are not part of the labs for the lenses, or even in the future for the frames. Put pressure on your representative or on your company that you're dealing with. Um, tell them Optisys can do it for your their competitors, but not for them. But you would like to still use them, so that maybe actually put pressure on them to uh, to deal with us. And you have a catalog. The whole point is to have as many suppliers as possible. But of course, we need to work hand in hand with them, and uh, for them to work hand in hand with us, of course. But so no, no, Centennials is only for the frames. Thanks, Eric. Uh, for the task, so uh, yes, uh, we'll show it to you that it's possible to email someone when we assign a task to them. Uh, also, it's uh, possible to change the status without opening the actual task. You can just right click on it and say, okay, I've done it, or I don't have to do it. Uh, we have the new colors to represent an old or new task. And uh, we'll see that we have Shortcut, shortcut to quickly go and act on a letter on an exam or attachment. And also that we can now open up multiple tasks, but also while we have a task open to do something else. So let's take a look at those details together in notices. So here in the task that we're gonna do, we can set up in the application under admin, users, we can set up the actual uh, email of the user. So if you all have internal emails or even your own Gmail or Hotmail, you can put it here and the task can be sent in your email as well as in your own Optisys task box. That's very nice. Uh, also, so you know, the task uh, now in version 42 had the same color pattern than they had in the task module for everybody. Um, and from the task here, if you right click on it, sorry, I uh, will be able to change the status directly from the status uh, option. And we'll be able to go into the patient file, exam, attachment, or communication. So if I have my task from here and I want to go on a specific patient, I, I don't have to click on the patient and then go to attachment. I go directly in their attachment. A little, little trick here. Also, I don't know if you knew that, but under admin, uh, and task, we have notions of alert. So well, not all the people knows that, but it's uh, it's been there for a while in Optisys. And it will allow you to create alerts for different um, reasons. An alert meaning automatic task, as soon as we have a trigger. So of course we have one that we don't even know, that is for, for the one who have online booking to actually uh, create a task every time a patient books online or cancel online. So you already know that you received those tasks. However, there's another one, as soon as a an invoice is canceled, we can activate that alert. So somebody who's gonna be part of that type and group will receive something, a little task, telling them that somebody canceled an invoice. Same thing for canceling a payment with a date prior of today. So weirdly, so if someone actually canceled a payment from yesterday or one year ago, 
and you'll be able to know at least depending who you define as to be the recipient of that uh, task. Same thing for a new invoice or payment with a different date. So why would you create a payment or in, uh, an invoice not today's date? So if that's the case, if it's a manager doing it to repair or something, it might be legit. But if it's not, maybe you want to know. Same thing if somebody changes the product catalog uh, prices uh, or your backup didn't work. Maybe you don't do your backup uh, all every day, uh, twice a day. But at the end of the day, if your backup goes online or on the cloud, if my backup fails, because before it goes online, I'll be able to know. And uh, if also uh, more technical, the total payment amount of cash sales report does not match the total deposit. So once again, that means that we have transaction in the past or in the future. So those are actually found under admin, task, and alerts. And you can set it up with a different specific type. And those task type can then be linked to a certain group or a certain person in the office to receive them uh, with a certain priority and a certain status. Any questions on the alerts? Thank you, Eric. No questions so far. Remember, you could always ask us a question using the question window, and we'll reply. Very good. We also have the predefined email shortcut. So that's a big one. Um, here, if I go to my patient file, we have the uh, usual uh, printers that oh, you all see. I don't know if everyone used them, but those are shortcuts to different personalized documents that we want to print very quickly. Could be a label, could be an actual letter, could be a thank you letter, could be pretty much everything if you use them. However, we also have those things that you might not see in your offices right now, just because those three uh, email shortcuts only appears if they're defined in offices. So how it works? So going into the admin menu, Going back once again, our default values, I said it previously, default values is a very powerful and complete tool to customize Optisys the way you want to. And of course, those shortcuts as part of that customization. And if we go to communication two, so we have a lot of tabs to work with, and then we go to communication two, we'll be able to define what they do when I click on them. So by example, the red one, if I click on it, will send to the patient an email with their combo Rx. So of course, you define what your combo Rx document is in your mail merge, uh, which is normally like a prescription type of uh, document, using a specific selection. So of course, the selection defines what information will come from the patient file and goes in that mail merge. And of course, a default subject for that specific email that will send it out by clicking on it a type, so that will be recorded in the communication with a specific type, and the hint is when you put your mouse over it uh, without clicking on it, just hovering over it, you'll be able to have an actual hint of what it does if you're not used to and which you know which color to use if you have three of them configured. But of course, all of them can be configured for different purposes. Uh, having different information uh, brought from the patient file and so forth. So for a lot of people who ask, how can I uh, send my um, contact lens or spectacle Rx to my patient by email? You can use that function. So if you create an Rx mail merge or Word document and the according uh, selection with it, uh, then you can actually send it by email. Most of you that have been installed in the last three years already have such a document and a selection already in your database. So you can just have to go there and select them. For the one who don't have those uh, documents and selection already pre-prepared for you. Uh, if you're okay, you can do it yourself. If not, our support team will be there to help you out. And just so you know, uh, the old uh, Rx by email thing, maybe talk to your, um, uh, your optometry order um, um, college in your province, uh, just to make sure that they're okay with it and what will be the conditions, uh, because it's a bit, a bit tricky. Uh, conversation, <laughs> depending who we talk to, and if it's it's a it's a legal thing or not. So yes, so of course you're not bound to do that RX thing. We can actually do uh, quick thank you letters, as you might imagine, orders already, emails, and everything. Of course, those shortcuts are meant only for email purposes. So there's no SMS uh, through this. Of course, we do have still the SMS function here, but we cannot attach 
a default like mail merge or whatever. Because once again, text messages are meant to be short, sweet. Any questions, Marc Andre, regarding the email shortcut synopsis? Thank you, Eric, for asking. There is no question so far. Very good. So, a uh, little uh, idea for you. So, you can send a link to the online appointment. So, if uh, patients say, "Oh, I would like to book, but I'm not sure," just send them an, send them an email and say, "Click here and book yourself." If you have the online booking, thank you email, uh, informative email. So, you don't have to actually uh, have to send them. Uh, um, information from the patient file. If the patient have, um, uh, let's say, some condition like a glaucoma, cataract, myopia, you can send them an actual generic document about what type of vitamins they should take or uh, omega-3 uh, supplement and so forth, uh, just to give them a bit more information if you don't have to give out that information on the chair. Uh, also, if uh, you want to specify to a patient all your new progressive, that it takes about two weeks to get used to their glasses and what can happen in their eyes and the dizziness and everything, you can actually just send it directly from there. So those are little ideas uh, we can use for that specific uh, uh, email. Uh, sorry, it's in French, but uh, yes, we have tips and tricks about optosis. So first of all, did you know that in optosis, we have the F4 function? I'm sure that everybody will say, yes, I know. <laughs> but uh, actually, this is a little uh, window that will appear from anywhere you are in the patient file. So here I was in the task. I click on F4 and voila, we have all the patient information. So if I need that information while I'm doing my exam, I, I need to know their age and gender while I'm in the actual examination, while I'm in the order, the Rx, uh, the invoice, I don't know if I need to do an invoice or a provincial claim. Well, then just F4 will give you the age of the patient right away. So those are the kind of information that can be very practical at any given moment. And even if I go to the agenda or the inventory, the actual file will stay there. And it's just until I'm going to change my patient files uh, where I am that it will actually change the name on it. So as you see here, I change file and it changed the information on it. So F4 will actually enable that little window or disable that little window. Also, that already ask uh, here beside the email. So a lot of people actually put in the email and put already ask, which is actually wrong a little. <laughs> Best practice is you put already ask only when the patient refuse or don't have an email address to give you. So if you ask for the email address and they say no for whatever reason, and they don't want to be bothered and asking every time about it, just click already ask. However, if they're correct, then they're okay giving you their email address, just put the email address. Don't do anything with the already ask because you have the email address. Of course, you asked for it. So uh, it's just a way to identify a patient who doesn't want to be bothered every time you're going to call or arrive them about their um, uh, email. So just make it more polite. Any questions so far, Mark Andre? No questions, Eric. Thank you for asking, and please don't be shy to, uh, to ask a question. Oh, we have a question right now. F4 does not work for me. How should we do? Ooh. Well, actually, I had the same problem exactly one minute ago on my keyboard. Uh, actually, that's because most modern keyboards have what we call function keys. So yes, we have we see the F1 to F12. However, by default, uh, those keys actually control the volume, control the copy paste, control the home buttons, uh, play, pause, or whatever, uh, multimedia um, icons. So you might actually want to click on the function key on the lower part of your keyboard to enable the F4 function instead of just maybe a lower your volume by pressing on F4. So it's a, it's a hardware related, uh, but uh, I experienced it myself on my own computer. So you, you sh you're not the only one, I'm sure. Any other questions, Mark Andre? So far, no. Thank you, Eric. Very good. I just wanted to show you something also here regarding the Rx given. So I don't know if a lot of you use it, but it's a very important part of what we call the KPIs or key performance indicators for your managers. So if you want to calculate your ratio of lost sales, what we call walkouts, um, that will actually can help you out. So if you know that you have an Rx with a patient that actually had a full exam, new Rx, and took a quick look at your inventory and said, oh no, the 
I, I will go elsewhere. Or just give me Rx, and I want to tell you why, and you know that you lost a cell and the patient doesn't walk out, please click on Rx given. Or if you're not anymore in the Rx and you're just printing it, print Rx, uh, Rx pedicle, Rx given. So that will actually click it for you, that little checkbox I just showed you. And in Altesis, we'll be able to see in the column given if you actually have a walkout uh, Rx or after an appointment. This will allow the key performance indicators to calculate that number. Of course, if the patient comes back the day after and say, oh, I, I actually um, I went over and you have by far the best selection. Let me buy your glasses from you. You can always uh, remove it or add it and control it the way you want it to. So you can always be very precise with it. But this is a great tool to make sure that we have a, uh, a very precise ratio of Rx given because we want to know and want to measure that information to see if we're getting better uh, with the staff from one month or one quarter to the other in terms of keeping the patients in the office for buying their glasses and contact lenses. Um, what else did I have here? Oh yeah, the alerts, uh, just so you know. So here I see a lot of clinics, when they use the note and optesis, they pretty much always use the alerts. We have to keep in mind that the alerts here in optesis, um, I should go maybe on another patient, are really made just for essential, super important information, like um, let's say a wheelchair patient or a severe glaucoma. So here we'll be able to, uh, Chair. So here we'll be able to put that information that will be maybe a link to a medical condition of a patient or a special alert like do not take checks from that patient. However, if your note is about the patient liking to talk about hunting, golfing, or prefer aviator glasses or wayfarer style, well, you can always put that in the internal note here. So that's going to stay there still, but the, the alerts are mostly made so when we actually manage our appointments in the scheduler, we'll be able to see that this patient might need a specific setup in my pretest room because they're in wheelchair, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it should affect how we're gonna either take the appointment or maybe the length of the appointment or uh, how I'm gonna arrive the patient. So because if we pollute the alerts too much with everything, well, nobody will just will just bypass the alerts and nobody will read them anymore. So those important ones will, might actually uh, go through without, without notice. So that's why it's important to keep the alerts as alerts, anyway. <laughs> Very good. So I think I've done a little tour of uh, what we call the advanced features. Does anyone have any other questions in Optesis? We'll, be, we'll have some time to take some questions, maybe not all of them, Marc-André. Sounds good. Um, so uh, we we we've got another uh, maximum of five minutes to uh, to end this webinar, um, Eric. So um, mm -hmm. anybody's got questions for us? Come on, don't be shy. Of course, uh, while you're you're entering your notes, uh, just to uh, refresh the fact that uh, we'll have that uh, the, the webinar available on our YouTube channel very soon. So you can always review it uh, with your staff or yourself for uh, note taking. If I went too fast on certain features that you wanted to have uh, more details and take note of, however. Uh, just also know that the support uh, is always there to help you out in that time. So if you have more time than usual to call us to actually start a new project or to have more insight on how to optimize your visual optics, will be our uh, experts will be there to help you out and answer all your questions that you might want um, to ask. And also uh, have a little request. We uh, are going to actually allow you to answer a little survey after that webinar allowing you to answer some of our important questions for us. It's just that we want to get better at doing those webinars, and we want, of course, to have the best subject that uh, is going to be important for you, and maybe the best times also to do those webinars. So please answer that survey uh, in detail so we can have a lot of data to work with and always get better doing those webinars. We love uh, 
do to do with those webinars with you. We think it's very important for you to optimize your user hypothesis as much as possible. And I think that be able to share that information together and maybe sharing or your questions actually was very interesting today. Any questions, Marc André, in the list? Um, we do. We do have a question, and here's a quick one we could answer. Uh, how could we update to version 42 of Optisys? Oh, very, uh, very good question. That's a very important uh, question also. So from Optisys, from the help menu on the top. So we always have that for multiple uh, usage, but of course here to be for to do the update. So please download the update first. This is a good maybe five, ten minutes uh, to update the actual um, hypothesis. Before you do that, make sure you're on the server and make sure that no one else is connected on hypothesis. Uh, if, if somebody else is connected, it will stop you and it will tell you. And then once the download will be uh, done, we can install and hypothesis will install the downloaded files on your server. And that can take another 15 to 25 minutes. Um, and of course, once again, just make sure nobody try to connect so while you're going to do that. And then on all the computers of the office, you'll have to start Optisys. And it takes a good five minutes to start Optisys the first time after an update. Uh, same thing for the server, by the way. So just make sure you have enough time before you go ahead with the uh, update. Thank you, Eric. Um, I, I think we have time for, for one last question here. Um, and I think you'll be able to answer this with our next webinar uh, soon. My staff has asked how to modify the pre-written emails that we send. To modify an email that we send? Uh, sorry, how do we ask, uh, uh, how do we modify the pre-written emails that we send? Oh, well, that's a very good question. Actually, you can't. So if you created a mail merge for an email that you send out, you cannot modify it. So Optisys will just react the way you set it up when you defined your Word document that you are going to create for that. So if it's a, um, a mail merge, you have to make sure that uh, that mail merge will always be correct. If you want to send somebody something very, uh, let's say, personalized to your patient, well, just go into the communication tab and send an email from there. So that's going to be uh, just a plain email from scratch that you'll be able to send to your patient. But normally if you do a mail merge, it's because you want the same uh, template and the same information uh, for to be sent to all your patients exactly the same way. Perfect. Well, I think that was the only time that we had uh, for you guys uh, today. Hopefully, we, you, you learned a little bit about Optisys to optimize your work in it and give you more tools to be better at it and be more efficient. So thank you very much for your attendance and for your time. Hopefully, uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon with our future webinar. You'll be posted, uh, keep posted by email. And of course, like uh, Marc-André said, go and re uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where all the webinar will be recorded. Well, once again, thank you very much. Have a really nice day and uh, hopefully talk to you very soon in our next webinar. Thank you, bye-bye.